remember is Dan Berg, Berg Athletics. Check it out. The Fluffmeister is defluffatizing right now. It is the season to lean up, and I'm going to begin leaning up just a little bit. I want to basically get my abs back and my lines back. So I have a new diet made for me by Kyle Hunt, kylehuntfitness.com. And I want to show you this because this is what an actual If It Fits Your Macros flexible dieting looks like. See, the problem is people who know about the science behind flexible dieting hear the, what you would call the bros, the old school bodybuilders, shoot it down all the time. And they get annoyed. So to shoot back, they post a picture of a Pop-Tart and they say, ooh, Pop-Tart, and I'm still shredded. You mad? Hashtag IIFYM. And then the bros see that and they're like, wow, all these idiots eat are Pop-Tarts every single day, all day. And that's not really the case. If you look at a real, if it fits your macros type of diet like this one, it looks very bro-ish. Now, I told you guys in my full day of eating video, I like regimented meals. That's what I started bodybuilding on because I started bodybuilding back in like 2006. That's what I'm used to. That's what helped me stay focused. I'm very boring with eating and I don't like tracking macros in my fitness pal. I deleted the app right off my phone. I hate tracking things. It's so frustrating and annoying to, hold on, let me punch this in. No, I want to eat. So I don't mind eating regimented stuff. It's habit for me. It's second nature. But here's an example of what if it fits your macros actually looks like in any real bodybuilder's diet who uses flexible dieting. Meal number two. Six ounces of chicken breast, one and a half cups of rice, green vegetables, which I do have cooked, two Kraft singles, those are slices of cheese, and two tablespoons of ketchup. 57 and a half grams of pro, 80 grams of carbohydrates, nine and a half grams of fat, 637 calories total. That is a good example of if it's your macros. Notice how it's not Pop-Tarts and McDonald's. It's still measured out chicken, still measured out rice, your greens. The only difference is we're able to throw two slices of cheese on there for the taste. You all know that I like my cheese melted on there. And then two tablespoons of ketchup. I'm able to throw on some ketchup and cheese to make my famous chicken and rice with cheese and ketchup <laughs> casserole type of bowl that I've shown you guys a dozen times now. That's what flexible dieting is. So it's just little details like this. Like I, I don't have to do just plain brown rice and plain chicken breast and suffer. I can throw a little bit of cheese on there and melt it on top. I can throw a little bit of ketchup on there, but we're still measuring. We're still eating the typical bro foods that you'd be used to. So we're looking at 2,855 calories for this deficit, 2,700 calories on days that I don't train. And all he did was removed about 40 grams of carbohydrates, Basically, he even left a note here. He says, just take out the oats on rest days. So literally, it's just this last shake nicks the oats if I'm not training. And that's pretty much where we're at. 23 to 35, excuse me, 25 to 35 grams of fiber every single day. Pretty simple stuff, guys. My goal here is not to get contest shredded. This is just a starting off diet to gauge where I'm at. I'm down from 190 pounds to 187 pounds. So three pounds drop, nothing dramatic, probably just a little bit of water weight basically, just a little bit of deflation. And I've kicked up my cardio. I didn't, I've been doing some awesome high intense cardio workouts. Uh, I jumped into boxing again, so I'm doing that like twice a week. A lot of the tire flipping, jump roping, etc. I can do a full video on it. So we're basically taking into account my high activity. I told Kyle what I want is to basically ride on a caloric maintenance, not really going to a huge deficit. And then I want the extra cardio activity to compensate and bring it into a deficit. And that will hopefully make it so my fat loss is very, very, very slow and very gradual. And this will allow me to not lose size and it will allow me to not lose strength. In fact, if done correctly, I can continue gaining strength. Because gaining strength during a cut is not the same thing as gaining muscle during a cut. You can still gain some strength during a very subtle, gradual deficit. Um, Johnny Candido said he's done that before. Matt Ogus has actually done gain strength into a deficit as well. So it's done all the time. And we're going to keep close watch on my weight. And we're going to make adjustments as needed. So if I'm starting to lose too much weight too quickly, flatten out, I don't have the energy, I don't have the strength, because obviously powerlifting is still my priority here, then we'll change it. We'll make the changes needed. I, Kyle stays in great touch with me all the time. But that's the diet so far. I basically told Kyle, he's great. This is why he's an awesome coach. He gives you the macros and a diet plan if you want it. And I basically told Kyle exactly the foods I already eat. Everything I laid out for you guys on my full day of gains. And I told him my exact goals, how I want to just kind of lean up, get my abs back, become a little bit more marketable looking again. You know, look the part of fitness for summertime. And um, still be able to gain strength. I want part of them to still be my priority, but I want to look good as well. And it can be done. So that is our goal right now. That's what a real flexible dieting diet looks like to everybody who's not too familiar with it and really can't stand the whole flexible dieting thing. This is what it really is. So that's where we're at. Check it out. I went to the store today. Everything is put away, but I got the hair gel, the gum, some of the essentials for Florida because I'm going to be leaving 
for Orlando, Florida this Thursday. I'm going to see you guys at the Europa Super Show Friday and Saturday with Isatory. I'll be at the Isatory booth, but I'll have my own stuff there. I'll have NWB gear there. I'll be wearing an NWB shirt. It'll be sick. So come up, say hi, take pictures. Let's have some fun. I actually went out and bought bananas and greens, asparagus, chicken, rice. Uh, you guys are probably wondering, Nick, what happened to the RTN greens you're so souped on? I'm out of them. I don't have them. Aw, Ari's already here at the gym. She's probably cheating. Check this out. Ah, you think it's a gym bag, but no. It's a Fastanisha travel bag. Got my Anis for my deadlifting, and I got my Nike Romelios for my squatting. I tried on Bobby Arcan's uh, Adi Powers the other day. Now, he is a size too big for me, so they didn't quite fit. But I tried them on and did a little warm-up set with squash just for fun to see what they felt like. Quite honestly, they feel almost the exact same. Speaking of the devil! Really? You're filming me? Caught you cheating. You're on cheaters. I don't like you. Hey, do you love me? You wish. Kiss the camera. Ocean State got new bumper plates finally. And then Atlas Stones are next. 10 bucks a month. Beltless squats. It is the first day of max OT week. So max overload training. We're going pretty heavy here. And the numbers Johnny has given me are 345 pounds, three sets, anywhere from three to six reps for each set. Now, note that I'm doing these squats with no belt as I've been doing all my squats with. I don't want to use a belt for squats as long as I possibly can. And honestly, I feel a lot more comfortable without a belt now. Whenever I, I try throwing on really just to see how it feels, it actually throws me off more and I don't feel as strong with it anymore. So beltless squats, I got to f my fifth rep for this first set. I could have gotten a sixth. I was contemplating it, but I decided to rack it and preserve my energy. I felt like if I had gone for a sixth, it would have drained my energy for the next set. So instead, I stopped at five, and now my goal is just to get good five reps for all three sets. And that's exactly what I did here. I did three sets of five. Now, you'll notice that my core is actually staying very, very contracted, and that's what I'm super excited about. I have videos from way back in my bodybuilding days where I'm banging out sets of six or eight with... Uh, Probably six, actually, not eight. But sets of six with 365 pounds. But my form was a lot looser. I would drop down, bounce back up. My hips would shoot up in the air. My butt would be every which way. My knees would be buckling. Uh, I wasn't using a good core contraction at all. I turned it into a good morning. You'll notice that with this form, there's no hip fluctuation at all. There's no hyperextension of my back. My hips are not shooting up. I'm not leaning forward and good morning it. My knees aren't buckling inward. There's a very, very, very subtle tuck of the knees, but that's okay. Dan Green said you can tuck your knees slightly inward on the way up. It creates more torque. And I am stopping here to catch my breath a little bit, brace myself, which I don't want to do. Ideally, you want to just go up long enough to take one good breath in and then go back down. But hey, I wanted to make sure I got all five reps, and I did. So, needless to say, squats are always an uphill battle for me. Um, but we're moving along nicely with them, and I'm happy with the three sets of five I completed today with 345. Now we'll move on to deadlifts. Oh my goodness. Now squats were a challenge because squats are just my weakness, and obviously, you know, I had to, they took a hit for a little bit because of the past injury or whatever, so it's been an uphill battle. I love squats today. They were fun today. The challenge was exciting for me. Deadlifts, on the other hand, were a pain in my ass. I got actually pretty frustrated and a little bit disappointed by the end of the deadlifts today. Here's my two sets, my two working sets of 440 pounds, reps again from three to six, and before I even began pulling, I knew that I was going to cut it to the bottom and just leave it at two sets of three, because I realized, I remembered that this is actually the first time I have touched regular deadlifts in about three weeks, if not four weeks. Not just heavy deadlifts, regular deadlifts at all. So I felt rusty. I couldn't really keep my core that tight like I usually do. Uh, my form was kind of crumbling. It was really, it was frustrating me. So I trained smart instead of trying to force out, you know, five or six reps, which I really think I could do with this weight. I just kept it at three reps, left it at that, acclimated myself back into deadlifts. Needless to say, I was frustrating. So I decided to try sumo deadlifts. And I just used this as an extra movement after my main workout. 
and I did it high volume lighter weight, which is what Johnny Candida recommended I do. So I did three sets of eight just to kind of see how they felt. Now, I didn't use a super wide stance, but I still kept my butt down. I tried driving my balls into the barbell, as, Mike, as uh, Mark Bell says. I kept my back nice and neutral. I think my form was really, really good. You guys can let me know what you think, but I made sure my knees were driving out, toes were just slightly outward. I really think I uh, kept very clean form on sumos. For me, sumos really make my lower back sore. That's why even for this lightweight 315 here, I have a belt on. It just makes my back feel better. It could be because of the past injury, or it simply could be because my back is just not used to a deadlift in this stance. So it could just be a matter of me needing to acclimate my lower back to this kind of a movement. Either way, I'm going to keep playing with it, and I'm going to keep incorporating these uh, in the end of my regular lower body workouts and see if I can't eventually switch from conventional stance to sumo stance because sumo stance is much safer in my opinion. Although personally for me, it's much harder because whether it's hard or easy is dependent completely on your build. Buy a t-shirt, nwblifestyle.com in the info box below. Tank tops, t-shirts, hoodies, dog tags, you name it. Support and represent the lifestyle you live.